Hello, I'm Casey Dinges, Executive Advisor for the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining me today as we discuss the Future World Vision Project. My guest today is Jerry Buckwalter, ASCE's Chief Innovation Officer. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be with you. What is the Future World Vision Project and why did ASCE decide to do it? Future World Vision is designed to ask ourselves the right questions about the long-term nature of our built assets. We often design them to last 50 to 100 years or more, and yet very few people examine how society will use those assets in the more distant future. To do that better, we created a computer model by which we look at the current and future societal impact of our built environment and examining that future in a way that acknowledges the massive changes coming our way, change that can drive dysfunction unless we're prepared for it. And we examine those changes as a series of interconnected phenomena, everything from autonomy, climate change, the Internet of Things, alternative energy, urbanization, personal expectations, smart connected sensors, and new materials. Essentially, Future World Vision is a platform to envision the future built environment and ultimately optimize future system performance and the benefit to society. Careful thinking about likely future realities is what civil engineers do every day. We're just extending that out over a very long time horizon. Interestingly, when we look out that far, we discover something. While the civil engineering profession has traditionally been well-defined, the increasing effects of change will force us to reconsider our roles and responsibilities. To be successful in tomorrow's world, engineers will need to be at the forefront of changing trends. Did the Future World Vision research examine environmental threats? Yes, we did. A dramatic trend is climate change and extreme weather. So we're creating virtual future cities with both the dangers of climate change and potential improvements considered. Climate change is currently accelerating, so engineers need to respond. Future World Vision is very focused on plausible future climate resilient infrastructure. And that built environment, particularly urban communities, is a major factor in either worsening climate change or mitigating climate change, in either creating extreme weather vulnerabilities or adapting to them. One of Future World Vision future worlds that we've just completed is Megacity 2070. In that computer model, we explore population migrations and how the location of massive population centers is a factor in our ability to adapt to climate change for better or worse. This will be particularly true in the developing world. Engineers design, build, and operate everything. And we look hard to innovate in practical ways, create mass adoption, and scale those innovations to communities around the globe, ultimately to accelerate both policy and practice to achieve climate resilience. Does Future World Vision visualize sustainable and resilient infrastructure? Yes, it does. We decided to take our research and create the stories that reach the heart and mind of all of us. Future World Vision creates virtual future communities that explore multidimensional city and neighborhood systems to prepare engineers for future challenges and consider the human impact. And more sustainable and resilient infrastructure is a key element in having a better place to live. But it's more than just visualizing it. Mega City 2070 addresses these challenges by creating a simulated and virtual reality enabled storytelling experience with evocative visuals characters and narratives. We want everyone to really imagine five communities of the world 50 years in the future, all designed to be radically different and provocative. 
we tell that story from a citywide view right down to a neighborhood view so the users can really understand the impact of sustainability and resilience. How does Future World Vision help us think more provocatively about a more sustainable and resilient world? Well, future planning is confusing, complicated, and sometimes feels disconnected from the present. As a result, it's easier to focus on incremental or short-term changes to existing infrastructure. So we use future scenarios to tease out longer term and more provocative ideas on sustainability and resilience. I'll give you a description of that provocation embedded in Megacity 2070. We first examine climate and weather vulnerabilities in our infrastructure and our communities. Second, we examine everything from planning, design and construction through the life cycle use of those assets. Third, we look at the design features in equal measure to the needs of the users of the buildings, the aesthetics, and various technologies. Fourth, we examine the entire community and every social ecosystem contained in it. Lastly, we examine how that affects faster emergency response and faster, less costly recovery operations. That's how civil engineers, planners, insurers, and policymakers create new strategies and engineering standards to adapt to these trends. It's how an engineer can think about what we do now and then provocate about how useful it is for future problems. And more importantly, things we do now that might not be good solutions 50 years from now. That's how we take the right steps towards sustainability and life cycle resilience with both the present and the future properly considered. Does Future World Vision make any predictions about future built environments? I often get asked that question. No, uh, we are not in the business of making predictions. On the other hand, we're not in the science fiction business. So we base our future worlds on rigorous scientific and engineering research. We're in the business of presenting a plausible variety of future scenarios designed to help us foster a new way of thinking. Essentially, we use future scenarios in a provocative way to explore how we can be stewards of new technologies and innovations while responding to environmental and societal challenges. That's why we examine quality of life as a first order outcome before we think about how we're going to design or build it. That enables engineers to ask the right questions. That's how I started this. The right questions about a future built environment that doesn't exist yet, contemplate the solutions and postulate the resulting benefit. And why is this important? Well, it's a complex system. Climate, healthcare, food, water, soil, biodiversity, and city economies are complex systems, more complex than each element, such as a building, road, bridge, dam, power plant, or cell phone tower. Yet our fundamental engineering principles still apply. However, global changes will force us to change. Standards based on legacy infrastructure may not apply well. New and untested tools may be needed. Engineers will need to be more forward-looking to apply new technologies and help build infrastructure while dealing with all types of uncertainty. Engineers can continue to be problem solvers, but can also become problem anticipators in a proactive and collaborative way. When we think about our future infrastructure, how exactly does that impact our urban communities or urban quality of life to enhance sustainability and resilience? Well, I define sustainability in very broad terms. Civil engineers can design infrastructure in accordance with better sustainability principles and aligned with rigorous sustainability standards when they emerge. We are also the stewards of the natural environment and its resources. However, the built environment, if done properly, enables city economies and a healthy social environment. 
If not done right, or if left neglected, it hinders city economies. If the transportation system is efficient and affordable, urban communities thrive. If water available, if water availability and quality is high, urban economies run well and are equitable. If energy and communication systems are robust at the granular level of individual buildings, urban economies are healthy. And I could go on and on. Therefore, more sustainable future communities are the ones that have an integrated infrastructure system that facilitates efficient and economically beneficial housing and movement of people, goods, and ideas. That's the type of sustainable living in its totality that we examine in Megacity 2070. And by the way, sustainability and resilience goals are not fixed targets. Design conditions are no longer static and sometimes, as in a pandemic, can change overnight. In this changing environment, all infrastructure must constantly adjust to be resilient, sustainable, and appropriate for the specific location and culture. And, and to your point, what technologies will impact us the most in the future and which ones will help us to become more sustainable and also which ones might cause additional hurdles to get over? Well, right now we see the advent of automation and autonomous vehicles, but we must be prepared for when that becomes the norm. At scale, it will pose challenges to the built environment. Uh, High-tech construction and new materials represent significant opportunities for potential improvements. Power, transportation, water, and waste systems will all have to be smart and be smart in a holistic way. Otherwise, solutions in one system simply cascade into unintended consequences in a different system. Our soon to be fully connected digital infrastructure will need careful engineering and will also increase the potential for external cyber attacks necessitating new approaches to resilience. We are entering a data revolution. We've already begun to see software interfaces and the use of data in the design and construction process. But the future is digital technology integrated right into the physical infrastructure. Designing these combined physical and digital networks will require us to connect traditional and non-traditional engineering disciplines, along with partnerships with scientists, educators, and governments to create efficient and personalized services, but also to ensure privacy and safety. Unfortunately, in the past, system interoperability in most of our cities has been a major barrier. Improved That's... information systems have been under development in many cities for a long time, but they are traditionally designed for the needs of each city department. They optimize each city function, but often do not create optimization at the macro level. Agile workflows often stop at departmental walls and do not enable interrelated system-wide improvements. In Megacity 2070, we focused a great deal on how a new era of smart, connected, and sustainable urban systems can enable transformative change in the way urban communities interact among themselves and with the built environment. This conversation about technology and digital systems seems to be equally the domain of others. So what does Future World Vision say about our civil engineering role? Well, we think about technology as the domain of scientists. And other industries besides ours often produce the new technologies. So Future World Vision provokes our thinking about technology stewardship. Civil engineers are the ones who figure out how new technology gets adopted and applied to the built environment. Uh, as an example, I'll share some specific questions we posed in Megacity 2070 to force ourselves to think about disasters like the current pandemic. 
Will population migration increase the probability of disruptions such as a pandemic, a food supply disaster, or societal unrest? How do we use widespread use of automation and autonomous vehicles to enhance social distancing? How do we ramp up automated engineering work activities and robotic construction to make us more resilient during disasters? And how do people ubiquitously connected through a robust digital infrastructure flexibly adapt work and communications during a healthcare crisis while protecting the global economy? In the real world, we won't know exactly what technological, demographic, or environmental changes are going to occur or how fast they will occur. But we do know that we must begin to prepare for the obvious ones and even the plausible ones. Jerry, you've mentioned Mega City 2070 a couple of times already. What's your advice for those who are thinking about future smart cities? Well, there's a lot of buzz out there about smart cities. Smart cities should be all about maximizing the well-being and quality of life of their people. Government leaders should focus on the outcomes or end states that are desired first and then start planning for the elements of smart cities that create a path toward those outcomes. My advice is don't just invest in the art of the possible. Invest in the smart city elements that explicitly enable the outcomes you want. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. And consider all city elements. Every aspect of life healthcare, the environment, mobility, connectivity, governance, and even creature comforts are aided by the utilization of smart city functions. What's the one thing you would want people to think about after they look at any of the future world vision virtual worlds? Engineers need to expand our capacity to identify, understand, and manage long-term risk and uncertainty. Only then, can we be confident that we are anticipating society's infrastructure needs? Future World Vision is one tool we intend to give everyone to help navigate unfamiliar waters. Jerry, thank you for joining me today for this fascinating discussion and how Future World Vision is helping engineers reimagine infrastructure. Casey, it's been my pleasure. Thank you. And for more information on ASC's Interchange series, visit ASCE.org slash interchange. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you next time on ASCE's Interchange Live.